It's good. I just to start out with uh, say a word to our veterans. Thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for also the fact that uh, I believe uh, by far the most equal opportunity employer in the world is the United States military. And uh, uh, I think that was due to the sacrifice of a lot of your predecessors. I also have always recommended to everybody that <clears throat> they go down to Fort Huachuca when they get a chance and see the memorial there to the Buffalo Soldiers. It's, uh, it's incredible. When you think of the life that they led on that fort in that heat with a lack of basic food and uh, 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 chasing uh, the best uh, cavalry on earth, the Apaches around, uh, it, it's pretty remarkable contribution and I recommend everybody to. And uh, the Korean War, you know, uh, a lot of us uh, don't realize that it was Harry Truman, uh, a not most regard admired president of the United States that integrated our armed forces. And uh, that was a signal event, I believe, uh, in American history. And I just want to talk to you just for a minute, and then I'd like to talk about small business and some of the other issues about our veterans. Our veterans are not taken care of, okay? That's just, let's just start out with that fact. I wish I could tell you something different. I can tell you that some of the men and women who serve in the VA are the finest on earth and the most dedicated on earth. The problem is a bureaucracy. The problem is that it is a bureaucracy that we all know how terrible it is. We all know that the worst scandal of 50 veterans dying uh, while being on a non-existent waiting list was one of the great scandals that spread all over the country. It, wasn't, it isn't unique uh, to the Phoenix VA. So uh, I've been working hard on that issue, and we have five staffers whose only job is to take care of veterans' issues. But more importantly, we passed legislation in two areas. One, uh, to try to reform the VA, which has only had partial success, I have to be honest with you, and the other on this issue of veteran suicide. On the, on, the, uh, on the reform of the VA, there's still, no, there's still no accountability, my friends. I'd love to tell you that there is. There's not. There is not accountability for performance. And that has to happen if we expect better performance. By the way, I won't stop until every veteran has a card that gives them a choice to go where they want to get the health care that they need. That, that's when I promise you. Second. Second point, of course, that I, and I'll, and I'll. So, uh, on the issue of business, my friends, we have a stagnant economy. One of the reasons why you have seen the unhappiness uh, in, amongst the American electorate and the rise of Bernie Sanders and, the, uh, and, and Donald Trump as both being, quote, outsiders, is because we have a very stagnant economy. Yes, the stock market is up and it's, and it's doing well, but when you look at the average Americans, when you look at the growth in our domestic product, 1%, that doesn't keep up with our growth in population. It is the process, particularly for a small business, is exhaustingly long. And we've worked on that and continue to work on that. One of the reasons why the cost of weapon systems is so high today and so outrageous is because lack of competition and lack of ability of companies like yours to uh, to compete because you can't get quote certified to be a, a uh, bidder on a defense con DOD contract. Contact our office. We'll try and uh, and and expedite that process. That's that's what we do. But we've also been working on legislation to streamline that process. We did pass uh, legislation on a bipartisan basis, one of the rare occasions uh, a few months ago that basically puts the responsibilities for education where it belongs, on the state, on the local authorities, on the school board, and on the parents, and taken out of Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm very happy that we passed that legislation. But every place I go in the state, there's concerns about education and funding for education. There's only one federal, there's only one aspect of education that's funded by the federal government, and that's special education. All other is funded by the state. And so it's hard for me to 
to tell them exactly what to do besides the legislation that we passed uh, uh, that basically reformed education. The worst education system in America resides on our Indian reservations, the Bureau of Indian Education. Every audit, every study, every examination of it has been, shows that it is abysmal. And so we're trying to, Senate, uh, State Senator Carlisle Begay has proposed a charter school system or choice system on Indian reservations. And so, um, and we need to pay teachers more but we also have to have more teacher accountability, I think you, you would uh, agree, in education. And I don't pretend to be an expert on it, but I do pretend to know, because of all my involvement on Indian issues, because I was chairman of Indian Affairs and I've been involved for years, we made solemn promises. And one of them was health care and the other is education. I, can I thank everybody in this room? who is an advocacy for a cause and serving causes greater than their self-interest. That's what I believe America is all about, and I believe that's what you are all about. So I'm grateful to be in your company. Thank you very much.